rest about that just a little bit. But my total warning count in that car, <laughs> wait for it, wait for it, six. I have gotten six warnings this year. Um, just doing my business, traveling around. Unfortunately, it's coming to a close, and so I'm trying to get in as much on my schedule as I can before I crown a new Miss Arkansas who will get to enjoy all of these things. But this really was not um, an easy road for me, becoming Miss Arkansas and in all of the work that it went that I had to put into that. And I told you I went to OBU, and when I was a freshman, I won a local preliminary in El Dorado and then went to the Miss Arkansas pageant. And I was 18 years old, and I, I didn't think I'd go and win, but I thought, you know, hey, I think I'll do pretty well this year. Well, let me tell you, I didn't even get my name called on stage at Miss Arkansas. I did nothing, and there's probably people who don't even remember that I was in the pageant that year. But I went home and I said, I know I can do this. I know I have what it takes to be Miss Arkansas someday. I'm going to work hard and I'm going to put everything I have into this, and then hopefully it's going to happen for me. And I waited for three years and I worked on everything. And when you think of pageant, you might just think of girls walking around in bikini and four inch heels on stage. And while that is an actual phase of the competition, there's so much more than that. There's talent, there's interview, there's having a platform, um, there's getting in shape, there's learning how to talk to people. All of those things are so important, and that's how they choose in Miss Arkansas. So I went back last summer as Miss South Central out of Malvern, and I won Miss Arkansas. And I'm so glad that I didn't give up after that first year, because I would never have these amazing opportunities that I've had so far. And a lot of people want to know what I received for being Miss Arkansas. And besides, of course, the crown, which is not made out of real diamonds, which is probably the number one question that I've gotten this year, um, I get, which the girls usually like, lots of clothes and lots of shoes and makeup and girly things. But the boys usually like when I tell them about the bright red Camaro that I get to drive around for the year. And kids always get so excited whenever they see me pull up at their school in that car. But it's come with its own uh, trials and tribulations this year, I'll tell you that much. And I learned a very important lesson wait, uh, not too long ago, and that is you can't tell a reporter anything that you don't want to be in the newspaper. And so we were having a casual conversation, a writer with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and I just happened to mention that, you know, I have a little bit of a speeding problem, and you know, it's gotten me in trouble a time or two this year. And it ended up being in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, right there, for everyone to read. And so I've gotten harassed about that just a little bit. But my total warning count in that car, <laughs> wait for it, wait for it, six. I have gotten six warnings this year. Um, just doing my business, traveling around the state. No tickets, but six warnings. And I know, it's really ridiculous, I promise you, I really have gotten pulled over six times. And one of the times that I was pulled over, it was on my way to my very first appearance. I was headed to Batesville, and the officer pulled me over and went through the, you know, man, you know, I pulled you over. And I was trying to be very nice, because this was warning number one, mind you. And so he let me go, but the next day I went downtown for the parade. And guess who ended up being my driver in the parade? <laughs> the same state trooper. And another time I was pulled over, um, this officer asked to shake my hand and then let me go. And another time the officer asked for an autograph for his niece. And this was probably one of my favorite times. I think this was time number five outside of uh, Stuttgart. And he pulled me over, and then after he realized I was Miss Arkansas, he apologized for the <laughs> Which, I mean, can you imagine? I just was like, you know, don't let it happen again. You know, <laughs> There's not much you can say. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of been some of my experiences with the car, and I'm hoping that we're not going to take that to seven. But I think this will be the last time that Alan Tillery Chevrolet, who sponsors our car, will give Miss Arkansas a red Camaro. I kind of ruined that for everyone. But, and then this has happened to me twice. I've gone to the gas station, and usually there's so much on my mind because I make anywhere from 
two to five appearances every single day. And I have had, this has happened twice, I've forgotten to take the gas nozzle out before I drive off, which always causes a big thing, so embarrassing. And now that people have video on their phones, you know, I'll see their phones out and they're catching me getting out and having to, to get all that back together. But anyway, so that car has been an adventure, but the best thing I received for being with Arkansas is the scholarship money. And that's really what it's all about because I don't come from a family that has lots and lots of money. Um, my dad grew up in Marvel with 11 brothers and sisters on a farm and paid his way through college, worked his way through college. And my mom grew up in Texarkana with eight sisters, so nine girls in one bathroom. And did the same thing, worked their way through college. And that's what, that was something that was important to them that they instilled in us that it was gonna take work and it was going to take a lot of determination in order to go to college and to pay for that. And so I needed scholarship money. ODU is not a cheap school. And from winning the Miss Arkansas pageant, I got $22,000 for school. And then for going on and placing first runner-up in the Miss America pageant, I got another $25,000 for school. And so I have quite a bit to work with now, which is great. Um, I'm planning on pursuing my master's degree while working as the new morning anchor for Channel 11 out of Little Rock. I'm really excited about that. Do you get Channel 11 yet? Okay, I'm still kind of learning where, where all we reach. So if any of you are up early in the mornings, oh, say 4.30 to 9.30, then tune in to Channel 11 in August, and you'll be able to see me every day. So that's kind of where everything is headed. Um, but like I told you, this was not an easy road for me, and it was one that took a lot of work. And one organization that played a really big part in who I am today and in allowing me to become a leader was the Boys and Girls Club. And from the time that I was five years old until I graduated from high school, I was a member. Um, I started out just on the cheerleading team, cheering for my brothers and having a good time, um, then moved into becoming a junior staff member, and then an employee in the summer, and I'd clean the floors and uh, serve the food, do all the dirty work, and I loved it. I loved getting to spend my days at the club, and then later was selected to be um, a National Youth of the Year. And what that means is that they look at your community service, your grades, your service to the club, and then they choose a youth that they feel personifies what it is to be a Youth of the Year. And that sent me to Washington, D.C. to meet with uh, President George W. Bush in the Oval Office and speak to Congress and meet Denzel Washington, which I thought was pretty neat. And it also enabled me to be an international ambassador in Turkey and in Germany and help open new Boys and Girls Clubs there. And what I learned while I was over there was a whole new appreciation for not just our military, but also for their children um, who sacrificed so much as well. And so that was a really, really neat experience for me. But I'll always be a member of the club. Um, I'll always be someone who goes back and volunteers because I know what it did in my life. But I encourage people across the state to find something that you're so passionate about. And I know I'm probably just preaching to, to the choir with a service-based organization like Rotary. I know that you do so much in your community and you make a difference in the lives of others. And I only wish that all our Kansans could be doing the same things that you're doing because it's making an impact and it's making a very positive impact. So thank you for the work that you're doing um, to help make your community a better place, which in turn makes our state a better place. So I do applaud you for that. But a lot of people want to know what Miss America was like. And it was interesting. Anytime you get 53 uh, young women together for 11 days, you're bound to come away with some stories. And my roommate was Miss New York. And I remember that when I showed up and they told me that she would be my roommate, I was not happy. Because I thought, oh, you know, they must have a sense of humor putting Little Miss Arkansas with Miss New York, who's from Manhattan, the big city, you know, we're not gonna have anything in common, and this is just gonna be a bad 11 days. But I could not have been more wrong. Um, she proved to be such a good friend. We had a lot in common and continue to talk um, every day, and she's actually headed to Arkansas soon to speak at a church, and so just funny how things like that turn out. But what we would spend our days doing is rehearsing for about six to seven hours, and then we would get things you know, ready for the show and wardrobe things, and then they would take us to these amazing restaurants. And I just have to tell you, it's not a good idea to take a hardcore pageant girl with you if you wanna enjoy your food, because they will ruin it for you every single time. And as myself not being
being one of those hardcore pageant girls, they ruined it for me. And I'll never forget that we were at this amazing Italian restaurant and they sat down a, um, a brownie sundae on the table, big enough for the entire table, all of us to eat it. And I'm just picking up my spoon, going, ooh, this is gonna be so mm -hmm. good. And I'm sitting next to Miss Illinois and she's just going, I cannot believe that this is what they're serving us. I just, wow, just everything, this is it. <laughs> and I'm like, this girl is crazy. And then she said, I haven't had dairy in four months. And I just looked at her like, I, how do you not have dairy for four months? Wow. Well, as it turned out, Arkansas, we did get first runner up, and Miss Illinois, who hadn't had dairy in four months, didn't get into the top 15. So, <laughs> I think that that's pretty telling. Um, but that's one thing I was really proud of going to the Miss America pageant, that I hadn't compromised uh, my health, I hadn't compromised my body to get down to an unreasonable size. I went at a healthy size and still did well. So I hope that that's a lesson to a lot of other uh, pageant girls and girls who think that you have to um, starve yourself to the brink in order to be successful because it's absolutely, absolutely not the case. But this really has been a fun, a fun year for me and people have asked me, you know, at least what have been your favorite appearances? Was it going to Miss America or was it um, performing on the David Letterman show or Rachel Maddow or going back to Las Vegas to perform with um, a famous ventriloquist Terry Fader? Well, all of those things were so much fun. And they were, you know, wonderful experiences for me. My favorite appearances are the ones I make every day right here in Arkansas, getting to meet um, with students, getting to go to Rotary meetings. I love Rotary because everybody's nice and I always get a free lunch out of it, which is good. And so Rotary, going to Rotary, going to churches, which I do quite frequently. And what I've tried to use this year for um, is to be an ambassador for the Lord. And I can't think of a better position to do that in than being Miss Arkansas. And through coming in contact with so many people and learning their stories, I just try to be someone that they can see God's love shining through and that they can see him working in my life. And so that's the, I think, the higher purpose of my life this year, um, to do his work wherever I go. And so those are my favorite appearances every day. I love being here in Arkansas. I love getting to meet little girls who look up to me because I remember being their age and looking up to Miss Arkansas and who would come to my school. I remember those things. And what I talk to them about is the camp program. And usually they get really excited when I say, today we're gonna go to camp. And then I have to break their hearts and say, you know, it's not that kind of camp, it's a little bit different, but each letter of it means something different. And so they'll spell camp for me, C-A-M-P, and C being compassion when we look around and find a need, because everywhere we look there's a need and there's people who are hurting, there's people that need us to be there for them and be their friend, and we can do that through compassion. A being action, I talked about my service with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America and how I know that all of you are serving your community in any capacity that you possibly can, and so that's so important to make our state a better place. So A is action, M is motivate, when we motivate each other to just be better. Um, even for me as Miss Arkansas, there's sometimes where I need a little bit of motivation to keep going. Sometimes I get tired. Um, this is a sacrifice for me this year because I live away from my family, don't get to see my friends a lot. And so motivation helps me keep going on days when that's hard and we can all motivate each other to be better. And the last letter of camp being power, um, I tell students that they have the power to be successful if they're willing to work hard and if they'll set high goals for themselves and know that they can achieve whatever they set their minds to, that they have the power to do that. And so that's the message that I take throughout the state. And usually I, I'm in about two schools a day. I've been in as many as six schools a day um, in six cities. And so I have a lot of opportunities to be around our students. And what they want, they want for people to look them in the eyes and to, to care to understand them and what they have to say. And it's been so neat with tools like Twitter and Facebook that they'll send me messages and say, you know, thank you for coming to my school. It makes me feel so happy to know that um, someone like you cares. Um, and so that, that's really touched me this year and that's been a good way for me to stay connected with people. And so I'm telling you, I mean, what, what a blessing. And I only have a few more months left um, I told you I'll be crowning a new Miss Arkansas soon, and I know that that's going to be bittersweet for me. I think it's good that I have a job lined up afterward because that'd be tough to go from being so busy and doing so much 
um, to not doing anything. And so that's going to be hopefully a good transition for me. But what I usually do when I visit Rotaries is I perform a couple songs. I told you that I'm a ventriloquist and have been since I was nine. And most people want to know, why on earth did you start being a ventriloquist? And I tell them I must have been a strange little kid or you know, I don't know what it was about ventriloquism that <coughs> appealed to me. Um, but it did, and so I went to the library and I checked out books on how to be a ventriloquist, which weren't very many, and I watched old Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chops tape, and whenever I could perform, whether it was at my school talent show or at my church or at the fair, it didn't matter, I would be on stage practicing that and getting better at it. And I wasn't able to perform today because we didn't have a CD player, but if you'd like to see it, you can go to YouTube, there's a few videos on there. Um, of me performing in various places, but it's just fun, and it's a talent that um, kind of transcends all ages, and people can appreciate it no matter um, how young or how old they are. And it's also been a really neat tool for me to get to share the gospel with others, because sometimes it's a little bit easier um, to understand and a little bit easier to accept things coming from a little puppet. And I don't really know why that's the case, um, but that's something that I've learned this year all along the way. So with that being said, Thank you for allowing me to be here with you today. Thank you for your service. And I hope that all of you will continue to be difference makers um, in your community as I continue to do that um, through all of the communities that I travel through. And I also have some autograph pictures that I would love to give you um, at the end of the program and then get to meet all of you. So thank you once again for allowing me to come. And it's absolutely an honor for me to get to represent you every day at this Arkansas. their first time to try coon, which it would have been mine. So I hate that I missed it, but maybe they'll <laughs> invite me next year. Now our nose is growing. <laughs> <laughs> Love to try coon. Okay. Uh, I just want to say that um, I watched you on Miss America, and I thought your talent was the best I had ever seen. Thank you. And I was on Facebook, and my when you didn't win, my Facebook just almost caught on fire. People saying, we were wrong. are not biased at all, right? <laughs> but thank you very much. That means a lot. Anybody else? Yeah. Well, you better tell her the state trooper down here is if he stops, it won't be warning number seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my secretary's husband's a state trooper, so we'll work on that for you. <laughs> Bruce knows them all by first name. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, it's obvious that the judges selected the cream of the crop uh, for this year. You are a precious young woman and uh, have represented our state so well, and we appreciate that, and uh, we appreciate what you've said today. And, 